Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Well, as we start 2023, we have a report out from the United States Supreme Court summarizing all of the activities which took place in fiscal year 2022 at all levels of the federal court. It is authored by none other than your Chief Justice, Justice John Roberts. Now, these reports have a tendency to be incredibly boring, um, but this one starts off with a very interesting excerpt from Justice Roberts that I think rings so particularly true in this period of time and is one that I have a hard time believing that Justice Roberts didn't intentionally put in there for very good reasons. So today we're going to spend a few very important minutes and talk about when the Chief Justice quietly tells the gun control states to go pound sand. Okay, so the issue we are talking about today is the annual report published by the United States Supreme Court. It's entitled the 2022 Year-End Report on the Federal Judiciary. And this report has a lot of statistics as the number of cases filed, cases decided at all different levels of the court. And there has been, at the appellate level, a significant reduction in appellate cases over the last few years. That's one of the things that I was able to derive from the stats. But I didn't check this report out from the stats because, candidly, I don't really care that much. But I was told that there was a preface to all of this, uh, authored by Chief Justice John Roberts. And, oh boy, is there... And it is one that I think all of us should pay very careful attention to because what I believe Justice Roberts is doing is, is he realizes that many of these gun-grabbing blue states have thrown a big old middle finger to the Supreme Court since their announcement of their holdings in Bruin. Well, I think in some ways Justice Roberts is kind of throwing a middle finger right back at him. The first four and a half pages of this report is a story which took place in the late 1950s in Arkansas. As many of you may recall, in 1954, the United States Supreme Court issued its landmark holding in Brown v. the Board of Education. That was a case that basically, once and for all, said, hey, you know what, separate is not equal, and we are going to now integrate our public school system. It was a landmark case in American history, still remains a landmark case in American history today. There's not a single student in law school who doesn't study the implications of this all-important case. Now, despite the fact that Brown v. Board of Education was very clearly decided on constitutional grounds and very clearly articulated, shockingly, many states, such as Arkansas, had a major problem with it. Does that sound familiar at all? Well, fast forward to 1957, three years after Brown was decided, and the state of Arkansas is finally in a position to allow nine African-American students to attend a public school. But, oh, no, 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 you see, Governor Orville Faubus, he was going to have nothing of that because he ordered the Arkansas National Guard to go out to that school to prevent, that's right, to prevent the integration of that school. Essentially, it was a governor thumbing his nose at the Supreme Court. Does that sound familiar? Well, faced with the state of Arkansas using the full power of the National Guard to prevent integration, and the lawsuit was filed. Once again, plaintiff's counsel was Thurgood Marshall, who had been the chief plaintiff's counsel in Brown versus Board of Education, later became a Supreme Court justice himself. However, the case, which was going to be assigned to the Eighth Circuit, it appears that the regular presiding judge fell ill. And so, for whatever reason, the United States Eighth Circuit decided to pluck a judge from North Dakota to come in and sit and hear this matter. That judge was Ronald Davies of Fargo, North Dakota, who went down to Little Rock, Arkansas now to hear this all-important case about whether or not the state of Arkansas had the right to stop the integration of their public schools. It is a huge undertaking for any judge, and you can imagine this judge coming from Fargo, North Dakota, down to Little Rock, Arkansas, with the weight of the world on him, and he has to make this all-important decision. And as difficult as that decision may be, Judge Davies found it an incredibly simple and straightforward decision because all Judge Davies needed to do 
was follow the law. In fact, Judge Davies was actually quoted in an interview about this some, time, some years later as saying, it was purely a question of whether the governor of the state of Arkansas could get away with the doctrine of interposition, placing himself between the federal government and the people of Arkansas. The law was very clear that the schools had to be integrated. I have a constitutional duty and obligation from which I shall not shrink. In an organized society, there can be nothing but ultimate confusion and chaos if court decrees are flaunted. Let me say that again, because I think that last sentence really rings true, which is, in an organized society, there can be nothing but ultimate confusion and chaos if court decrees are flaunted. Where in America do we see court decrees flaunted? Oh, I'll tell you exactly where. We see it in California. We see it in Oregon. We see it in Washington. We see it in New York. We see it in New Jersey. We see it in Maryland. We see it in Illinois. We see it in all of these states that are essentially taking a look at clear United States Supreme Court precedent and throwing a middle finger at it. And Justice Roberts is quick to point out about some of the violence and threats of violence that have occurred against the federal bench in the last couple of years. If we, from a political movement on either side of the fence, begins to thumb our nose at the rule of law, nothing but chaos and anarchy will ensue. The mere fact that we have threats of violence against our federal bench is an indication that our continuous flaunting of Supreme Court precedent is placing not only our entire legal system in jeopardy, but the justice's safety is at risk as well. So what Justice Roberts is saying is, is that there is a reason we have the rule of law. And whether you like the rule of law or not, it does not matter. Because we as Americans, in order to have an organized society, in order to have a true democracy, in order to have a constitutional government, must always follow the rule of law. If we don't like the rule of law, we can fight it in the courts to see if it can be changed. But we have to follow it when we are making our laws. Listen, if you have any questions about this or anything else related to what's left of your Second Amendment rights, you guys know how to get a hold of us. You can always contact us at WashingtonGunLaw.com or, of course, you can call us directly at 425-765-0487. Now, in the meantime, let's remember, part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here at Washington Gun Laws, to know what the law is in every situation and how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching. Stay safe.